there is a lot you can do in terms of entitlements, in terms of cutting, and in terms of also uh, the theft and the, the bad management of entitlements, tremendous bad management of entitlements. Just leave him alone and let him talk. The Trump campaign is in damage control after those comments. Democrats, including President Biden, are seizing on Trump's remarks, warning he'll follow through on his threats if he wins another term. Kay Coppins and Fernand Amande are back with us. Uh, he will follow through. He will follow through. To be clear, folks, when we're talking about entitlements, he's talking about Social Security, you know, the things that we pay right. into that come out of your check every week. I just, I... There, this, this lets me know there's no strategy here. I don't, I don't know about the rest of you. Fernand, what do you think? You know, it's the banality of Everyone. WTF. With I just want to note, everybody was like... <laughs> We're mm. contemplating. Everyone collectively you know. was like, hmm. <laughs> but, you know, this is the Trump brand. He's going to say something today, and tomorrow he's going to absolutely reverse himself, just like he did on TikTok in China, and everybody's just going to move on to the next thing. And I think it's part of Trump's approach. He's not really held accountable to what he says or what he does. And it just becomes, again, I think this election cannot just be about Donald Trump. It needs to be about what Donald Trump represents versus what jo Joe Biden and the Democrats represent. It is the fork in the road, the proverbial fork in the road on who we want to be as a country and what kind of government we want to have. Do we want to continue 247 years of representative free democracy in this country? Or do we want to have a day one dictator and an authoritarian movement, which is what Trump represents? And so it's not so much about the words that he says. He's going to say whatever he wants between now and November. It's about the actions and the history of what he's done and what he's going to continue to do. That's what I think is the concern. Not so much what he says about Medicare or Social Security today or TikTok tomorrow. Well, Michael, I think that gets it exactly right, which is we're all living in a bygone era where people would campaign on policy perspectives and then we would evaluate them based on those policies he has made it such michael that those those days are gone i still believe that there are voters who are motivated by those issues i do believe that there is an opportunity there for the biden administration to create a contrast but it's pretty alarming in as much as it's alarming what he's saying it's pretty alarming to Fernand's point how loosey-goosey he is with these positions Policy? We don't want no stinking policies. No one's talking policies, right? I mean, that's kind of the the reality of our politics today, McKay. Where this this, I mean, to Fernand's point, um, this really is about the not just the policy side of it, but really what what Donald Trump represents and what this may say about the country. So, well, but but I I just want to go back because I think that this is evidence to me, and and it's one of several data points recently I've seen that that suggests that Donald Trump, from a campaign politics perspective, is getting worse at this. Right in 2016, one of his big advantages in the in the 2015 primaries, mm -hmm. the Republican primaries, and in the general, was that he distinguished himself from other Republicans in saying, I will not cut Social Security. I will not cut Medicare. Right. I'm going to make our country so rich that we don't need to cut entitlement programs. Now, that was all kind of bluster and nonsense, but he understood at kind of a gut level, it's not good politics to be talking about cutting Social Security, and that helped him, right? It is remarkable to me that eight years later, he's now going on TV and talking about, yeah, we could we could cut Social Security. Who knows, right? right. And, you know, his campaign rushed to walk it back mm -hmm. because they, they knew that this was not helpful. But I, I do think it's true that, you know, most voters have kind of made up their minds about Donald Trump and Joe Biden, right? This is yeah. a rematch. Yeah, they have. They, they've sorted themselves. Yeah. But there are persuadable voters in some of these battleground states. And, I, you know, I would need to look at the data, but I would bet that cutting Social Security does not help you with persuadable yeah. voters. I mean, it doesn't help you with some of the most reliable voters, which are uh, more senior uh, seasoned folks in this country. Uh, the Trump campaign spokesman did try to walk it back. Uh, he said that Donald Trump was referring only to cutting waste and fraud didn't provide any detail. To the case point, I think it's important to put up on the screen what Project 2025 has mm. said, because <clears throat> I think Donald Trump's change is because of this. Look at the second one. It says entitlements. Our deficit problem is a Medicare and Medicaid problem. Then mm. they talk about abortion. They say abortion is not health care. Abortion pills, single's greatest threat to unborn children. Minority rights. Mm, I, I think they're just, talking about just us. Just delete terms, or do you <laughs> mean delete people? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Education, Ukraine. These, uh, the, so 
Trump campaign officials have said there's no one else putting together our policy. We're doing our policy. But if you look at, if you juxtapose the things that Donald Trump and many of his allies are saying with what is in this Project 2025, they add up. I I do believe that while people, yes, think know who feel like they know who Donald Trump is, they feel like they know who Joe Biden is. What they are planning to do is very, very important because these yes. are two different kind of presidencies. No, I agree. And I do think there will be a difference in terms of how the Trump presidency will be staffed, the Trump administration will be staffed mm -hmm. this time versus last time, in that there will not be adults in the room the same way that there were at the beginning of the Trump I've written about this. You know, the that Project 2025 is being assembled because conservatives looked at the first Trump term and realized that it was too disorganized. He didn't know what he was doing. And so, you know, the the kind of ethos of the second Trump administration will be staff the entire federal government with people who are Trump loyalists, who either see the world like he does or are willing to obediently implement his worldview without question to, you know, guidelines or precedent or democratic norms. Mm. Well, speaking mm. of the previous administration, former Vice President Mike Pence has weighed in on whether or not he will be endorsing Donald Trump this time around. Take a listen. It should come as no surprise that I will not be endorsing Donald Trump this year. Donald Trump is pursuing and articulating an agenda that is at odds with the conservative agenda that, that we governed on during our four years. And that's why I cannot in good conscience uh, endorse Donald Trump in this campaign. Uh, Fernand, no big surprise there. You were the one, though, who was doing focus groups, and I wonder, does that move the needle at all? You know, I think, Alicia, this could actually be one of these watershed moments, because I was actually shocked mm -hmm. that Mike Pence stopped before the endorsement. We've seen what Mitch McConnell has done. He's actually gone the full distance. If this opens up an opportunity for other Republicans of conscience, whoever those that may be left, to do what Mike Pence has now done and say, you know what, this is a bridge too far. I cannot support this man if Nikki Haley follows suit. If we start to see other members of the Congress and in the mm -hmm. Senate follow suit, I think it can be problematic and it can hurt Trump with Republican voters because all he needs to lose is a sliver of them for this race to be a big problem for him. So I think that's what's on the table now with this surprise, to me at least, uh, Pence non-endorsement of Trump. Well, I think, for, Michael, for, now the can, question becomes, can he just hold, right? Does mm. he just say what he has to say and then walk away? Or does he muddy the waters by talking about, you know, any of these third-party candidates? Who, um, who's, who's talking about No label, candidate? no labels. Oh, no. We're no, still waiting I mean, to find mean, out who their, their great Pence? big names are. Yes, yeah, Mike Pence. He, yeah, here's, here's the deal with, with Pence. I, I'm greedy. I'm sorry. I'm greedy. In this environment, given the, the real threat that Donald Trump represents, I'm greedy. So I am so happy and proud and excited that you said, hey, I can't, I can't uh, endorse him. But who are you going to vote for? Exactly. Who are you going to vote for? Exactly. Because that's the next step for all of these Republicans, every last one of them. Don't just come out and tell me I'm not supporting Donald Trump. Tell me who you're voting for, because it matters in this election. It matters to every voter out there to know where you stand, where you plan to place that ballot. Mm -hmm. Because the, the salve is, oh, OK, he's not endorsing Trump. And everybody goes, assumes that means I'm not voting for him. Uh-uh. That's not how that works. Mm -hmm. So I think clarity from everybody in this, in this moment is important because it's not just enough given everything else that we know um, about, you know, Pence's history and all of that, along with others with, when it comes to Trump. I think at this moment, uh, Alicia and, and Simone, for me, it's a matter of saying I'm not, I'm not endorsing him. I'm standing with Joe Biden. Or, 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 you know, fine. <laughs> I just, I, I, Mike Pence goes on in that interview to say he's not, he can't, so he can't vote for Joe Biden. And I know that there is a belief that all from a lot of, you know, my, you know, progressive friends and some of my Democratic colleagues that everybody has to be willing to support Joe Biden. I think that if you look at it, obviously, uh, I would like a president that has empathy and a plan for people that's going to protect freedoms and not one that's going to be a dictator on day one. I just, I don't, I don't think dictatorships are going to do too well for I mean, people that look like me. I'm just, you know, just throwing it out there. So, but if there are Republicans who are at least unwilling to support um, Trump, fine. 
fine, don't support him. But nowhere did you hear the former vice president use the term, I'm not going to support him. He said, I'm not endorsing him. And that is very, very different. I think we need to listen very closely when folks are making these kinds of statements because I just, I don't know. And I get it. I get it with some Republicans who, who said, oh, I just can't vote for a Democrat. But this is not, you're voting for your country. You're not voting for a Democrat in this case. I have disagreements with Joe Biden on a number of policies. Oh, we know. And, yeah, y'all know, <laughs> right? And, that, and that's okay. But that, that's, that, that's a good policy. That's good and healthy for our democracy to have those disagreements. Well, we're sitting here having conversations about a, a president with 91 federal accounts against him. Um, and people are scratching their head and wondering, oh, I don't know, you know, should I support him? Or says, as Simone just noted, he wants to be a dictator. And you, you go to, well, hmm, I'm still worried about the 81-year-old. You've got, somehow we've got to shake ourselves out of that fog and understand what this is about. And I do get the idea uh, that it's hard for some uh, Republicans to, to jump, go across the street. But, baby, you need to do it. I was waiting. I was waiting for Michael Steele. Come on, baby. Because the get country the needs you more than your party I'll also does. also remind Trust you, Michael Steele, it, no, it is no longer 91 counts, but we'll talk about that in the next hour. Yes, we come will. Through. That's come, right. It's come no through, longer 91. Come through. <laughs> McKay Coppins, Fernanda Mondi. Thank you, you both for coming through.